communication is a two-way street, they say. But science communication seems pretty much a one-way street from the science, the scientist, to the citizens who are not scientists, because scientists are citizens too. Do you agree? Do you think that when we say science communication, we are actually thinking more of a dialogue? Yeah, well, in a way, it's natural, right? If a scientist is being asked to talk about his own field of expertise, he's immediately in a situation of knowing more about it than the person's asking or the society asking. So you, it's, it's very natural to settle into this kind of explaining position. You don't know, you're ignorant, it's not your own fault, you haven't thought as hard about this as I, you haven't had the time to investigate all the details, I have, so let me explain. But given what I just said about this science communication being driven also by the goal of legitimizing policy, government, then of course a different set of issues come into play, right? Because the way we want our policies to be legitimized also depend on democratic ideals. And there, this kind of, there is someone who's in a position of exception, the scientist, that is in tension with this kind of democratic ideals about legitimizing policies. And so at least there is a tension that you can see there. But going further on that line, I would say also for the scientists themselves, there is a good reason to start thinking if they are being in this role, really along the lines that you point out. Communication in the end depends on, on, on interaction. And if you realize that what you're doing is, is not just explaining something, but explaining something because it plays a role in the way that people are being governed, in the way that, that, that a state is being organized, then of course there is, I think, a reason to be open to the kind of questions that will come back about relevance. And this is, I think, the point where science communication really can become a two-way street. So when it's about information, of course, the scientist knows more. He can give information that the lay audience doesn't have access to. But when it's about determining the relevance of this information, why do we think this is interesting to know? Then the scientist still ha has an interesting perspective, but he doesn't necessarily has the last word. Then there is, a, I think, a space for a legitimate, interesting conversation to be had about relevance. And when we're talking about relevance, a set of issues having to do with values and, and broader expectations enter the conversation. And we all agree that this is something that the scientist is not necessarily in a privileged position to talk about values. So that's, that's I think, where the, the, the interesting input in, in how to think about communication as a not just an explanation, but also about well, a conversation, that a conversation about relevance of information, about results established.